today we are again with another uh, faculty lecture uh, in this Jaipur Surgical School. So just a brief introduction about this uh, Jaipur Surgical School. This is an online initiative that has been started under the guidance of uh, Professor V.K. Kapoor, uh, especially for the general surgical trainees in the Middle East and low-income countries. So we are holding these sessions every Friday at 3 to 4 p.m. And we invite uh, more inputs and suggestions from all the students as well as uh, the teachers so that uh, how we can improve this session as well as uh, uh, any other content they would like to include in this. So uh, for today's faculty lecture, I introduce uh, Dr. Sadaf Ali. Sadaf Ali. She is the head of surgical gastroenterology department at Shere Kashmir Institute of Medical Sciences, Srinagar. Uh, to moderate this session, I request Dr. Rajinder Desai, sir, as, along with Professor Kapoor, sir, to moderate this session. Uh, topic for today is overview of chronic pancreatitis. Thank you. So, uh, Rajin, initially, you please uh, moderate. I have some administrative uh, job to do for a few minutes. I'll join okay. uh, after a few minutes. And uh, again, as Piyush said, uh, request to all the participants, especially from Africa, uh, that we keep suggesting the topics which you want to be covered and then we will identify a suitable faculty for those topics and we will have those sessions. Uh, Sadaf, please uh, start. Yeah, so I'll, I'll start. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Piyush, Professor Kapoor, uh, Dr. Rajinder Desai and the whole team at uh, GI Surgical School. Uh, very good afternoon to all of you, uh, especially students. I have been assigned to talk about overview of chronic pancreatitis and uh, on my slide, I have shared my slide, it's not moving. Your slides are visible. Yeah, they are visible, but it's not moving. Uh, yeah. Yeah, move. okay. Oh, they move together. So, uh, what briefly I would be covering under this presentation would be definition the etiopathogenesis presentation diagnosis, which includes the investigations and imaging to come to a conclusion of chronic pancreatitis and its complication and the treatment protocol, which would include both medical endotherapy and surgical treatment, including the indications of surgery. So as a precise definition, a chronic pancreatitis is a progressive inflammatory disease of pancreas leading to fibrosis and atrophy. Right. I think I need to minimize this also, uh, wherein uh, uh, you have a progressive fibrosis and atrophy of pancreas and then there is subsequent calcification involving both uh, peripancreatic organs as well as pancreas. Uh, the peripancreatic organs likely to be involved in this progressive fibrosis are bile duct, portal vein, splenic vein and duodenum. With this, there is occurrence of irreversible loss of exocrine and endocrine functions of pancreas. There is pain, statoria, and diabetes mellitus in this disease. Now, coming to the etiopathogens of the disease, the major risk factors associated with development of chronic pancreatitis can be categorized as Tigaro. But Tigaro system is not, nothing like a very complex system. It's just an abbreviation given to the initial letters of the factors which are associated with occurrence of chronic pancreatitis say the t stands for uh, the toxic metabolites associated with uh, chronic alcohol abuse and so on and so forth so the main cause in chronic pancreatitis in maximum areas in the world is an alcohol abuse in situation and other reasons of chronic pancreatitis are idiopathy less commonly in in patients uh, there are other metabolic re reasons like hyperlipidemia, hypercalcemia, infections of viral and bacterial etiology, genetic mutations. At times, they are hereditary like SPINK1, CFTR, and PRSS1 mutation. There may be autoimmune pancreatitis uh, associated with other autoimmune diseases, for example, SLE and Jogren's. And it can be because of anatomical obstruction like malignancy, structure formation, congenital anomaly like divism or annular pancreas. So all these reasons, as I said, that it's toxic metabolite and idiopathic and genetic and those Tigaro kind of autoimmune and obstruction at the end leads to irreversible morphological changes in the pancreas 
and causing inflammation and fibrosis. So what exactly leads to the final fibrosis is in chronic pancreatitis, all these factors with injured pancreatic cells and reads of inflammatory cells, platelets, uh, tend to uh, release cytokine, interleukin and growth factors, which are, which are uh, the pancreatic satellite cells, which are quiescent pancreatic satellite cells, these are present beyond the usual endocrine and exocrine cells of pancreas. This activated uh, pancreatic satellite cells leads to fibrosis. And what happens is that one way is that this with this activation leads to fibrosis. The other way is there is damage of SNR cells, there is obstruction on the uh, pancreatic enzyme flow, which leads to activation of digestive enzymes, auto-digestion of the tissue, and this auto-digestion of tissue due to re inflammatory reaction also leads to end product fibrosis, and all this leads to pancreatic insufficiency. And what are the symptoms in chronic pancreatitis? The cardinal presentation is pain. This pain is usually in the upper abdomen, intermittent or chronic. Frequently, the pain is very severe. It has its actual characteristic uh, the finding of being intense stabbing pain in upper abdomen and as the disease progresses the pain becomes more and more severe and debilitating now what are the other presenting features would be weight loss multiple vitamin deficiencies as described by patient diarrhea is basically frequent greasy false smelling stools which are hard to flush over time a damaged pancreas failed to produce enough insulin and these patients develop diabetes and related symptoms. There may be nausea, vomiting and frank features of gastric outlet obstruction in few patients. Some patients may present as emergency uh, with GI bleed due to uh, uh, the splenic uh, sinistral portal hypertension, splenic pain, involvement in thrombosis or obstruction with fibrosis. There may be obstructive jaundice due to bile ducts, which and its presentations like um, clay colored stools and uh, uh, pruritis and, and many a time symptoms of cancer in chronic pancreatitis when there will be loss of weight and appetite in addition to jaundice, obstructive jaundice symptoms. Now coming to primary cause of pain in chronic pancreatitis, you know to know why pain occurs in chronic pancreatitis. So there are many hypotheses. One of them is there's, there's a duct obstruction related to tissue hypertension. Uh, the, uh, duct, duct obstruction related to tissue hypertension and where there's a tension in a small case, it gives pain. There's active inflammation over there. There's tissue ischemia. And the most important is the altered nociception or the salutogenic response of pain, which forms, which, which, which is a very complex thing to be explained in detail. Uh, the other causes of pain, or you can say the secondary causes of pain, are related to complications like pseudocyst, uh, pseudocyst tension related pain or compression uh, over, over an area, uh, stricture related colleagues, inflammatory mass related aggra aggravation of pain, then the diabetic neuropathy, opioid related hyperalgesia, drug dependence, and phantom pain, and so on and so forth. Now, this pain arc in chronic pancreatitis is very complex. What happens is that there is intrapancreatic neuropathy uh, due to persistent inflammation, the neuronal damage, the hypertrophy, the increased density, increased perception, the peripheral intrapancreatic uh, nociception involvement, then the uh, extrapyramidal path phase, the central spinal neuropathy and the central cerebral, uh, uh, you can say, neuroplasticity. So all these things actually form an arc persistent pain and that is why majority of the time the pain is blown out of proportion to the occurrence of the inflammation or you don't find an objective inflammation now so if the pain is so important present patient you need to grade it appropriately in chronic pancreatitis where you may not have any pain with grade zero to a very very severe pain in or worst pain in uh, possible uh, as 10 this not going into minor details because of the time limitation i would say that all of you should be knowing because you know uh, you have to be very objective about what kind of of pain you are taking care of and you cannot just say that pain pain is can be very simple mild and barely noticeable at one and it can be very strong uh hard to do any work at all at at, at point a and uh, so you have you need to grade the pain app appropriately the commonly used painting score in surgical practices by us is the isabeki pain score 
which consist of four questions regarding the frequency of pain the intensity of pain which can be even the similar one to 10 point can be put as a smiley or a grim on a vascular uh, in, uh, on a visual analog score scale a uh, use of analgesics and the disability inability to work so this four component can help you guide what exactly you are looking at this will help you both pre assist and post assist the treatment results uh, and 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 the success uh, then based on requirement of analgesia also many a time the european countries practice to understand how mild moderate or severe pain it is when there is mild use of narcotics uh, once or twice in a month it could be mild but when you have use it almost weekly it is moderate when you use it weekly with very strong drugs or um, uh, or you almost use the drugs daily then it is a, a severe or a major kind of a pain coming to diagnosing specifically chronic pancreatitis is all work of imaging it can be diagnosed as simple for as an ultrasound and based on the requirement of clinical indication and complications you might have to do a ct plane with a cct abdomen and mri mrcp ERCP and EUS. In 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 early days of managing chronic pancreatitis, ERCP used to be the golden test. But now, with advancement, almost all of them uh, give you a kind of appropriate information you require. Now, coming to uh, the findings, what you look for is you look for pancreatic calcification, you look for ductal dilatation, and you look for any atrophy on in the imaging. And ultrasound actually can assist. you in making a diagnosis in patients with a high index of suspicion when there are recurrent episode of pain like chronic pancreatitis and the imaging is normal or equivocal now diagnostic erc pain early disease the erp has a lot of role in managing the treatment but only for diagnosis rarely used in present era unless you have been practicing or doing a stimulation test and all uh, all, 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 all those uh, you know related imaging if you want to take now what are the findings on uh, ultrasound the findings on ultrasound are i am sorry i am using the cursor very frequently is that you uh, may uh, endo ultrasound may be very helpful as i said yeah. and you may pick up uh, subtle findings of lobularity excuse me Somebody speaking. Lobularity with honeycomb appearance, lobularity without a honeycomb appearance, smaller area of cystic dilatation because of the compressions of an uh, a negligible calcification, stranding of the uh, pan pancreas due to inflammation, dilatation of the side side branches or hypoechoic margins of the main pancreatic tract. Conventionally, if I would say that diagnosing chronic pancreatitis in advanced stage is very easy, it can be simply op. Obtained uh, 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 by uh, even an ultrasound, where you see a dilated main pancreatic duct with multiple strictures and calcifications. Now, coming to uh, early diagnosis, what do you look in endo ultrasound? Just for the students to have an idea, you look into uh, this kind of um, uh, hyperechoic duct wall when the duct is normal. Endo ultrasound is basically done. Through uh, ultras with uh, with the help of an ultrasound probe, which is inbuilt in an endoscope probe, and uh, our medical gastroenterologists give us the clue that there is a small side branch dilatation, or there are few small branch dilatation of the normal duct, which can clinch to a diagnosis in equivocal cases. When you are doing a CCT abdomen, you should consider a plain CT because it can reveal uh, this kind of calcifications, and this is the ductal dilatation of the and creatic tab now coming to mrcp and ercp for the students to have an idea mrcp actually gives you an idea about the sur surrounding parenchyma and uh, the dilatations if you plan a surgical treatment uh, it gives you a road map mapping about exactly what kind of strictures you are trying to deal with the associated problems can be assessed as you can see that there is structural involvement of the bile duct as well similar a replica in ercp when a procedure is planned say if there's an emergency decompression required in cholangitis for this biliary obstruction and then this would be a picture you can see that that is this is a disease main pancreatic duct with filling defects as well as a dilated common bile duct these are few more pictures of mrcp where you can see the dilated duct 
and uh, uh, the stones and structures in the distal pancreas. So coming to uh, uh, grading of the disease, uh, usually used classification is Cambridge classification where again it has come through the ERCP uh, workup where you find a normal appearing duct and side branches, main duct and side branches is labeled as normal. It is considered to be equ equivocal if there is dilatation of uh, three or less side branches with a normal That's main right. pancreatic duct and if there is a uh, 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 if there is a uh, dilatation of more than three with a normal PD, then it is mild disease. In moderate disease, you have additional stenosis of main duct. And severe disease usually have so many findings, which we usually come across, surgeons come across their clinical practices with uh, the main duct obstruction, cyst formation, uh, pseudocyst formation, uh, and pancreatic calculi. So uh, to put it up together, I have used this chart from literature is that uh, uh, you have an early disease where the pain is recurrent, but the complications are not there, not much of morphologically, morphological changes, normal pancreatic functions, endocrine, exocrine, and you need to struggle to make a diagnosis, all those stimulation, stimulating CTs, and uh, I, we will discuss some invasive investigations also. In case of moderate disease, there is more incre uh, increasing number of attack of pain with increased intensity, more likelihood of complications like a cholestasis, pseudosis, segmental portal hypertension. There will be progradient morphological changes detectable on imaging. There will be impairment of pancreatic function, but rarely in moderate disease, you'll, it will mount to occurrence of statoria. And many of the investigating uh, armamentarium can pick up the diagnosis. You need to do some glucose tolerance tests also because diabetes is very likely. In advanced disease, the pancreas is burnt out. There's likelihood of decreasing pain with all additional complications which might require attention. The cardinally, all these patients have uh, stone formation and um, there is often impairment of both uh, endocrine and exocrine function and most of the patients have statoria. I'll not go into details for surgical uh, students in early phase but this is a rosemont classification we use in equivocal courses uh, cases where you have some uh, uh, signs assigned and some parameters given to come to a conclusion of diagnosis especially in uh, early uh, cases and uh, some more experimental or not available investigations when you have strong hunch in early uh, chronic pancreatitis pain then uh, the pattern or the profile of microRNA expression is different in early and late CP. And these are HSA, MIR221 and 130A are biomarkers of early chronic pancreatitis. We don't have these things available with us, whether some uh, Western countries are having, I am not sure or aware, aware about it. Uh, but uh, what we can do and we usually use is uh, you can look into the genetic mutation. These are frequently available at genetic centers in most of the tertiary healthcare centers where you can look for SPINK1, uh, CFTR. And if there's a family history of already you have treated one person, the family coming up with symptoms, you can look for uh, this PRSS1 gene mutation. Now, coming to other diagnostic investigations, you can have non-invasive uh, complementary uh, uh, test for diagnosis, measuring the absorption of fat because fat is not absorbed and because of insufficiency of pancreatic enzymes and 12 gram or more fat per day in the stools is, is suggestive of chronic pancreatitis. Similarly, the level of enzymes uh, secreted can be measured. Uh, with uh, with with uh, uh, both serum trypsinogen or fecal elast elastase. Fecal elastase is is uh, found want to be more accurate, and it is less in chronic pancreatitis, less than two hundred gram, uh, two hundred uh, microgram per uh, uh, gram of stools. So uh, other uh, invasive investigations which are infrequently done these days, but you should be knowing is you can have uh, aspiration directly from duodenal intubation and look into the bicarbonate levels um, uh, from right from uh, 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 placement of tube with frequent intervals up to 60 minutes and a low bicarbonate level again is uh, suggestive of uh, chronic pancreatitis. 
then a word about differential diagnosis differential diagnosis uh, in chronic pancreatitis can be in early phase acute cholestitis chronic cholestitis biliary colic recurrent uh, acute smoldering pancreatitis irritable bowel syndrome functional abdominal pain peptic ulcer disease patients with pancreatic cancers post herpetic neuralgia pain of abdominal aortic aneurysm thoracic radiculopathy and so many more because once you discuss as a student and you need to know some differential diagnosis it looks very easy in a person who is working for so many years and managing chronic pancreatitis now complete management of patients with chronic pancreatitis actually needs a complete workup the investigation cannot be focused only to looking uh, uh, at at images specific to findings of chronic pancreatitis uh you need to do all investigations which include a baseline of uh, as simple as fasting blood sugar hba1c level the complete blood cell count liver function test kidney function test any other relevant investigation related to comorbidity like in some patients you might have to do pft while preparing a patient for surgery or you might have to do a cardiac workup for some patients you need to do nutritional assessment the uh, the bmi of the patient should be known to you the albumin status the vitamin d e level calcium phosphorus magnesium at least minimum you have to correct any anomalies picked up and then you have to think about making a target to specific treatment now these patients need a multidisciplinary approach which is very important there should be complete abstinence from alcohol and tobacco you should guide them for my dietary modification with low fat good nutrition diet you may have to start with ppi and non opioid analgesics just as simple as a good dose of paracetamol maybe or acetaminophen would be enough theoretically the pancreatic enzymes degrade the cholecystokinin uh, releasing uh, uh, factors and uh, this uh, limits the uh, stimulation of uh, pancreatic secretions and decreases pain and many people believe in adding this for pain management as well but you definitely need to add pancreatic enzymes for exocrine insufficiency you need to control diabetes if present any and uh, adding anti neuropathy drugs like pregabalin gabapentin may be of help and usually used in practice by many treating physicians many patients are usually depressed due to the debilitating symptoms for a long time and would also need counseling and antidepressants so uh, uh, and if there is an, a simple cause see there is the cause is very complex but if you can address a simple cause like pancreatic dysfunction with sphincterotomy you can refer the patient to your medical gastroenterology colleagues you need to keep a regular check on the weight to look for a patient's improvement or deterioration you need to keep pain and analgesia diary to help making decision if require if any intervention is required a step up approach is a practice uh, followed by majority involved in treating chronic pancreatitis upcoming literature is actually proposed a better outcome and quality of life in early surgical intervention for these patients but one bottom line is following protocols give help uh, giving better results and better management to these patients suffering from a lifelong disease so some of what i said i can put it in a flow chart so that you receive it better is a patient of chronic pancreatitis diagnosed with all these investigations if picked up complications of course an intervention may be required initially like a biliary stricture duodenal stricture and uh, pancreatic cancers based on the disease the intervention would be planned and the others would require low fat a non uh, narcotic analgesia no alcohol keeping a log if there is no response uh, at about 8 week then you can add pancreatic enzymes and acid suppression in c for response then if there is no response this patient may need an endoscopic therapy if you have a specialist and expert is available uh, and if not perform then you have to discuss in details regarding the use of continuous narcotics because you remember that this is a chronic progressive disease and surgery is going to take care of the part of uh, pain or its complication only so versus uh, addiction on long term drugs and risk and benefits of surgery now surgical details will take it in the next slide so just to emphasize i have put it over here that it's a multidisciplinary dis uh, management uh, requirement requiring disease gastroenterologist medical surgical anesthetist pain manager counselor psychiatrist radiologist and of course that endocrinologist is missing out there are to be a part of my management team now what do you do in endotherapy because these are all general students over here so uh, endotherapy is also if if you are trained in that Uh, is a mode of treatment uh, 
uh, but it is considered to be used in less complex disease and if expertise is available it involves an erp with pancreatic duct stenting or stricture dilatation most of the times usually indicated in single dominant stricture or a solitary calculus in the head area ERP extraction of stone is achievable for clearing only small non-impacted calculi which are less than 5 mm and fewer. Now, uh, other patients who have, uh, I don't know whether my voice is very loud. Uh, the audio is there, na? I have some sounds of Griffin. So, other patients who have... Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. 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 So the other uh, uh, method would be adding a lithotripsy to the stone disease, which can be conventional or And Then some patients uh, complete stone uh, fragmentation can be achieved with the help of lithotripsy in majority of the patients, but then complete duct clearance is low as well as complete relief of pain is only observed in most of the reported literature is around 60 percent so this is an example how they go about it uh, they use a guide wire uh, say in a case of wisdom and then they deploy a stent if syntotum is not enough and uh, if there's a stricture then they use a guide wire and put one stent and sometimes these are two stents placed uh, with the concept of uh, dilating the stricture so they are your medical gastroenterologist uh, colleagues would um, take a patient uh, for once there is pain uh, in per with persistent after medical therapy or conservative treatment and uh, offer this treatment. They follow protocol of following the patients after two months and if there is no improvement in pain, uh, uh, then uh, they refer the patients. Uh, to surgeon and if there's a positive response uh, then uh, they follow them uh, annually with exchange of stent and by two years they expect a result if the stricture or the stones are still there or the stricture is refractory then again there's an indication of surgery so, so to some of the indication of surgery intractable pain not being managed by malignant and other alternative treatment a concurrent occurrence of biliary obstruction, duodenal obstruction, symptomatic pseudosis, internal pancreatic fistula, GI bleed due to portal hypertension or uh, splenic vein or portal vein thrombosis, bleeding aneurysm. And if you have a strong suspicion of malignancy, this is a big chapter in itself. Uh, then uh, the goals of surgical treatment are again same that you want to relieve the pain. You need to control the complications. You have to preserve the uh, endocrine and exocrine function as far as possible and the patient has to come back to his social and occupational work and has to need to have an improvement in quality of life the basic surgical options for treating these patients are drainage procedure where you open up the pancreatic duct open up all structures remove all stones and anastomose it to a regional uh, rue and y uh, loop uh, limb and uh, uh, you can resect a part of pancreas, usually head of pancreas, or you can combine the procedure of drainage and resection in chronic pancreatitis. Now, the, in chronic pancreatitis, uh, you uh, initial the first people was also described for chronic pancreatitis. Uh, you do a pancreatic, you can do a pancreatic or duodenectomy resectional procedure. You can do a pylorus preserving pancreatic or duodenectomy or Baker's operation where there is a duodenum preserving only pancreatic head resection. The drainage procedures initially it was duals where they did a more caudal anastomosis, opening up the pancreas. Subsequently, it was replaced by Pestu's operation, where it was not a, that complete kind of a pancreatic ostomy as described by Parkinson Rochester's modification where they open up the duct right from head to the tail of pancreas, uh, removing all structures and stones, entering the unsmeared duct, and then making an anastopancreatic ostomy. The combination procedures actually address, again, the inflammatory areas or massy areas uh, with um, uh, coring of the head of the pancreas in a uh, phrase procedure, the Bernie's modification of Vegas procedure, where he resects almost the head but creates a one anastomosis or the Isabekis V shaped excision. So, decision of these procedures are based on some sound reasons. Uh, once you decide that patient.
is endotherapy, you have to look for main ductal dilatation or there is no uh, pancreatic duct dilatation. So if you have a dilatation and pancreatic head mass, which is inflammatory, of course, with more dominant disease and had more extra ductal calcification, consider phrase procedure. And if these are absent, then lactic pancreatic ostomy would be good enough for some patients. When there is no ductal dilatation, then you have to offer a sectional procedure. Uh, if the disease is predominantly in the head of the pancreas and pancreatic head resection in the form of pagus or a pancreatic or duodenectomy may be feasible. And when the, pa when the whole pancreas is equally involved, then you can consider with a small duct disease, you can consider V-shaped incision, which actually it's not an incision, but excise the pancreas with a pancreatic or uh, The other option for this patient is total pancreatectomy comeback, which was initially early described as child's operation. And those patients who have disease in the tail, which are very few, may require a distal pancreatic domain. This is just a pictorial presentation of the, whether you have done an LP or internally you have uh, did a coring. Uh, you put a jejunal uh, uh, limb over there in a roux and y fashion and complete it with a jejunal The classical whipples, you take away the distal uh, stomach. Uh, there's a pancreatic jejunostomy, hepatic jejunostomy, followed by a gastrogenostomy, whereas in the pylorus preserving, the similar is done with preservation of pylorus. In total pancreatectomy, the duodenum and the pancreas and those organs are lost. You take out the spleen as well and you make a hepatic jejunostomy and a gastrogenostomy. The most commonly practiced operation I will uh, discuss in brief that you open up the uh, pancreas, preferably at the junction of head and neck, avoiding the portal vein area. Uh, initially aspirating uh, the dilated duct with fluid, taking it as a guidance and opening up the duct both proximally and distally, then in piecemeal, the pancreatic head is cored out, taking few uh, securing sutures around the sea loop of the pancreas for hemostasis, but still many times in inflate pancreas, the coring is a little bloody. And then the operation is completed with a pancreatic jejunostomy over uh, uh, There is no coring done in lateral pancreatic jejunostomy or Partington Rochels, where you open up duct right up to the tail of the pancreas into the splenic hilum and the head. Of course, you need to clear the unstrained duct also. A little about Baker's operation, he has decided a complete transfer section at the level of the portal vein where you tunnel it routinely for pancreatic duodenectomy, excision of the head which is done meticulously along, along the sea loop of the duodenum preserving the head of the pancreas and then this is completed with two anastomoses one the pancreatic duodenectomy over here and one uh, the radiation of this area burn modified it with not transecting this area almost mounting to the section of head and make creating a single anastomosis so what are the results of surgical treatment a good local resection with or, or lpg or combination provides a good pain relief almost in 70 to 80 percent of the patients there is reporting of modest improvement in men by many uh, in endocrine exocrine insufficiency and a significant increase in weight on long-term follow there are many studies by, by Brookler and his group, Uzapiki on his group, they have proved the safety of this procedure and good long-term pain relief and superiority of surgical procedures over endoscopic procedure. The advantage of surgical procedure is that it is a single-stage procedure as well as, uh, uh, on the other hand, the uh, endoscopy requires multiple intervention. The pain scores are objectively shown to be better and statistically significantly better in surgical versus endoscopic therapy. And a recent trial, uh, uh, which, which is very popularly known as the ESCAPE trial, has shown that early, sur early surgery was with a head-to-head -head, uh, endotherapy uh, compa comparison has recommended early surgery in these patients. Now, coming to other treatment options, there may be den denervation procedures offered to some patients of chronic pancreatitis, uh, uh, considering that the pain in chronic pancreatitis is mediated by neural changes processed through the celiac ganglion and the autonomic nervous system. Majority of the time, it involves chemical neurolysis through percutaneous endoscopic mm -hmm. procedure or sometimes during surgery when you come across a hard inflamed uh, pancreas yes. uh, not fit enough to be yes. operated or an inoperable case and yes, you uh, do it yeah 
the other options are uh, that um, uh, th this is also a good option for patients who are moribund and not a candidate for surgical procedure but the bottom line is that it provides a short term pain okay, relief and recurrence or bhi do teen cheezon mein involved hai to whether she has time yeah Uh, can uh, then the other import, uh, operation which has a comeback as i said is total pancreatectomy because the brittleness of the diabetes was a problem of past with a uh, present era of, of transplant uh, surgery is becoming more common uh, eyelid cell auto transplantation uh, is done and uh, uh, these patients uh, you remove the whole of the pancreas including resection of duodenum distal bile duct and spleen but uh, in context to the transplant uh, uh, and min minimizing the ischemia you should try to preserve the arterial that supply while dissecting the pancreas in the very end of the procedure now a difficult area in managing this patient is recurrence after surgical intervention because all patients who undergo surgery do not have full proof long term pain relief they are very difficult to manage this patient should be again evaluated for other causes of pain like gallstone and peptic ulcer disease as well as look for any obstructing stones or structured anastomosis by imaging if present you can be managed by limited number of attempts by endoscopic intervention whenever you have expertise available and if not you can even consider in some selective patients a redo surgical procedure many a times the redo procedures may not be redo anastomosis and completion pancreatectomy may be required and may be the option of the intervention wherein there are studies which have reported nearly 50% improvement in uh, use of narcotic or independence from the drugs and uh, there is also a significant number of patients who do not develop uh, you know uh, do not have insulin dependence and uh, and and improve quality of life in in this patients as well but uh, to sum it up whatever i said i would say that chronic pancreatitis is a serious health problem for patient where pain intensity and frequency of pain attacks you reduces the quality of life the cause of pain is very complex than understood as intermittent episodes of pain observed in these patients do not always confirm a flare of inflammation so pancreatic neuropathy with components of central centralization including potential roles of sp spinal gl uh, glial activation of in chronic pancreatitis tends to explain these patients having very low thresholds for pain or perceiving it more you can put if the word is not correct an expanded a pain area refer it is important to focus on targeting this uh, no susceptive symptom uh, system of pain in future uh, unidimensional simple visual analog score or multi dimensional scores like isabikis and pain inventory scores can uh, are easy guide to assess patient's pain and response to treatment antioxidants pancreatic enzymes and analgesics are helpful in patient treatment decreasing ox by decreasing the oxidative stress and inflammation currently the standard of guideline for use of analgesia and chronic pancreatitis is same as for other pain the pain should be managed in a pain relief ladder pattern as recommended by world health organization from level 1 to level 3 tramadol a drug of level 2 is most commonly used and superior to use of morphine uh, handling the complications candidates for first line endoscopic treatment are those patients who have disease near ampulla obstruction of main duct with single stone or single stricture and early stage disease surgical treatment is inevitable in majority of cases of chronic pancreatitis to reduce pain and have a long term effective results having an initial success rate of 80% surgical interventions are tailored according to the morphological changes in pancreas as requirement of resection decompression or combined procedure current evidence of timing of surgery suggests that is there is a beneficial role of early surgery within 2 to 3 years of diagnosis and symptoms and those patient who have fewer endoscopic attempts and those who are not yet on chronic use of opioid analgesia are the patients who are likely to have better results dealing with all stones and strictures with complete clearance of main pancreatic duct duct of ancinate removal of all inflamed tissue in head uh, with parenchyma stones is key to successful surgery this is best achieved in common practice most of the surgeons believe in that in combination procedures like that of phrase 
there is an emerging comeback role of total pancreatectomy as an initial treatment which looks to be promising but needs further evaluation i thank you all for listening to me and uh, if there are some questions or some alteration we can start it. thank you very much yeah rajin thank you ma'am for that wonderful presentation it was very detailed and comprehensive for a very difficult topic that we have to deal with in our regular practice and yeah. practice depends on your location because uh, the etiology of chronic pancreatitis changes for example in kerala it is more of uh, toxins in the food and uh, genetic mod modifications which are important while in andhra pradesh where i work alcoholic chronic pancreatitis is more important so it is a very comprehensive coverage ma'am thank you thank you thank you so yush you want to add anything uh, no sir it was a i think very concise and wonderful lecture giving a brief overview over uh, especially the management of chronic pancreatitis uh, thank you ma'am any questions comments from the audience anybody wants to ask anything from dr sadaf so uh, just a few points from my side one as rajin pointed out it's very important to differentiate between uh, tropical calcific uh, pancreatitis where the duct is usually hugely dilated there are large calculi in the main pancreatic duct with some extensions into the uh, secondary ducts but little parenchymal calcification on the other hand the western uh, chronic pancreatitis which is usually alcohol related yeah. Uh, has more of uh, parenchymal calcification and uh, the ducts are not as dilated and it is the uh, ductal dilatation which to a great extent decides the modality of treatment and if we are planning for surgery then what surgical procedure as uh, sadaf uh, pointed out in detail now the conventional teaching which is still the standard of care for management of chronic investigations i think she covered well that Uh, by and large it is mrcp the non invasive investigation ercp today is not to be done for diagnosis it is to be done only as a part of a therapeutic intervention if we are planning endoscopic uh, management of chronic pancreatitis and that holds true for ercp for biliary disease also today both ercp and ptc should almost never be done only for diagnosis because mrcp gives all that information they should be done only as a part of therapeutic intervention so uh, us is a useful modality if we are suspecting chronic pancreatitis but imaging mrcp doesn't show the changes us can pick up early changes of uh, uh, chronic pancreatitis and that is the use of uh, us uh, primarily uh, management to begin with uh, the conventional uh, uh, protocol is that you start with medical management pain relief antioxidants uh, enzyme replacement Uh, if it doesn't work then you go to endoscopy if it doesn't work then you go to surgery but recently as she also mentioned and this was the experience uh, uh, published by my colleague dr rajnish from scpgi lucknow also that if the case is suitable for surgical intervention which means a good dilated drainable duct then surgery as the first modality of treatment probably is better because it saves time it saves money and it gives good results so there is a rethinking on that that if the case is surgically suitable then probably uh, uh, surgery as the first intervention rather than following the conventional step up protocol uh, may not be uh, required and i think more and more reports are coming in uh, to support that the second general issue which is of importance when dealing with chronic pancreatitis is whether there is a superimposed malignancy and that dilemma arises especially when you see a mass in the head of the pancreas on imaging there are other uh, clinical and other indicators also for example uh, change in the character of pain uh, recent rapid weight loss uh, recent onset of diabetes or worsening of diabetes uh, tumor marker level the uh, diameter of the common bile duct and then as i said uh, uh, presence of a mass so 
how to investigate a pancreatic head mass in the background of chronic pancreatitis is a big diagnostic dilemma. There are so many investigations, but till we get a positive tissue diagnosis, we cannot be sure whether it is benign or malignant, because even if the tissue diagnosis is negative, we cannot say that it is not malignant. So that is a separate topic in itself, which I think we will cover in um, another presentation that how to investigate a pancreatic head mass. So all the um, audience uh, who are there, if you want to read a little more about chronic pancreatitis, then uh, what Dr. Sadaf uh, has very aptly summarized in this 30-40 minute presentation, please send me a mail. I put my mail address in the chat box, vkkapoor.india.gmail.com. I'll be very happy to send the chapter on chronic pancreatitis from my online book, uh, Pulse in Operative Surgery. <laughs> Right, sir. You have put up a very important point regarding mass in chronic pancreatitis, which ultimately does not clarify even on taking an endo biopsy or the background of so much fibrosis. And it's it's a I mentioned in the presentation that it's 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 a it's a discussion in itself and yeah. it cannot be you know covered in a comprehensive coverage. So you can consider it later on. We'll, we'll a have a separate uh, discussion on right, that. sir. Any any other questions from students? Dr. Salomo, uh, please send me a mail uh, so that I remember. Send me a mail. Just write chronic pancreatitis in the subject of the mail. And all the mails which I receive in the next few days, I will respond. I I just like to ask a question to ma'am. Like, uh, what is your uh, experience in patients with uh, chronic pancreatitis who are who have simultaneously biliary obstruction as well as gastric outlet obstruction. So, like, is it always better to go for a resectional procedure in the form of Whipple's or how feasible is to do all the three bypasses? If you take on a basis of experience, uh, I have, uh, you know, felt sorry about uh, uh, not all three obstructions I have. I haven't come across all three obstructions simultaneously. We've got biliary obstruction with with a, a painful chronic pancreatitis is a common finding. And if you have worked up extens extensively, even those which who do not have a dominant mass can sometimes have a malignancy. So a call between a pancreatic or duodenectomy and uh, and uh, a double drainage where you can do a pancreaticojuginostomy and a hepaticojuginostomy or a uh, hepatico or polticojuginostomy would be uh, would, would be two options this would be based on your tumor markers and almost similar kind of evaluation which sir pointed out towards a presence of a head mass with jaundice because jaundice it can be benign but at times it can be malignant so you have to uh, use all your resources to look for if there's an involvement in malignant stricture. Of course, a small pliable uh, early stricturing with no significant jaundice can be corrected within the coring itself. And uh, a, a, a major tight stricture may require a, a double drainage. But if you have a strong hunch of malignancy, then, uh, you know, better than to be sorry because Pancreatic denectomy is an agreed accepted mode of treatment for chronic pancreatitis can be another option or the second option to be taken. This is my uh, view. We'll take views from uh, sir as well. Kapoor sir. Uh, I was audible. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> I had another question from you, ma'am. Uh, what about groove pancreatitis? How often do you see it and how do you go about managing it? Because there is controversy whether you need to do a Whipple's or you need to have a conservative approach and it goes down by itself. So I am a bit confused because I have read both the views. Uh, I haven't managed a case of uh, groove pancreatitis as yet, uh, though I have heard people talking about it. And, uh, you know, eventually many a time. Again, as I said, as a, as a first call, it ends up in a pancreatic or duodenectomy because within the unit, we had one case of group pancreatitis, which subsequently did not turn out to be malignant. It is a very difficult area of uh, uh, treating uh, patients of chronic pancreatitis with resectional procedure, even if it is as simple as Vegas, 
पेनक्रेटिक टूटनेक्टमी और मेलेग्नेसी इन द बॉडी ऑफ पेनक्रियास ऑन पैनक्रेट ऑफ क्रॉनिक पेनक्रेटाइटिस बट दिस इज डुएबल एंड विथ सिमिलर काइंड ऑफ रिजल्ट और इवन बेटर रिजल्ट एज फार एज द पेनक्रेटिक फिस्टुलर रेट्स आर कंसर्न so i might not be uh, you know uh, good enough to tell you that what call you should be taking but if i happen to manage it uh, it might may end up in doing a pancreatic duodenectomy uh, and uh, we have these are rare things we don't have enough enough literature to su- su- suggest but of course the double obstruction or the triple obstruction can be benign many a times and it needs double or triple drainage unless you have a strong hunch of malignancy I have a yes. very small experience with two patients with uh, groove pancreatitis, and uh, we have to accept that groove pancreatitis is usually a retrospective diagnosis, because as Sadaf said, most of these cases will be misdiagnosed as a pancreatic head hypodense mass, and they will undergo a pancreatic or duodenectomy, and then you find nothing, and retrospectively say that it was groove pancreatitis. In two of the cases which we managed. there were some clinical features which didn't fit in with the diagnosis of pancreatic malignancy and we kind of took the risk of uh, waiting and uh, doing what is what i call as the test of time so these patients had this hypo uh, dense or hypo enhancing area in the typical groove between the uh, first and proximal second part of duodenum and the pancreatic head and cbd and these patients somehow have more gastro duodenal obstruction rather than biliary obstruction if that is the situation you should start thinking of groove pancreatitis and of course if everything else doesn't fit in so we gave them uh, the test of time and then over a period of time with conservative management uh, the uh, gastro duodenal obstruction resolved and uh, they remained all right for the next few months which uh, proved that uh, it was not malignancy but yes in most of the cases it will be a retrospective diagnosis but if you have a young patient who is otherwise well preserved the tumor marker levels are not high your suspicion on imaging is not very strong of malignancy patient has more gastro duodenal rather than biliary obstruction then you should probably start thinking of groove pancreatitis and after fairly strongly excluding malignancy to some extent you can probably wait but obviously this patient has to be kept under very close follow up counseling is very important it should not happen that when you operate later and it turns out to be malignancy they kind of blame you or accuse you of delaying the treatment of malignancy so uh, whenever you are handling such a dilemma uh, i i feel counseling and consent is very very important so i would like to add on this and too. also yeah yeah got this i think so basically so we have a very small experience but we have six cases like we are uh, looking into and going to soon soon going to publish it also like in two patients we have done bypass especially for gastro duodenal obstruction and four patients we have done vipals in two patients there were biliary obstruction also so we have found that the resection procedure especially in group pancreatitis is more beneficial because the bypass patients usually come again again with pain that the component of inflammation in the gastrointestinal groups where it takes very very long time to settle in and they usually come back with pain the gastric outlet obstruction is settles with bypass but usually these patients complain of pain and they require analgesics for a long time on the other hand with patients when we have when we have done uh, resectional procedures the analgesic requirements have stopped yeah i second your opinion uh, when i was a young assistant professor in 1999 i encountered such a case with duodenal obstruction and a little bit of calcification in the head of the pancreas and uh, i uh, was not sure whether it was malignant or not in that day and age we didn't have uh, all the facilities available today so i did a vipals on that she did very well luckily uh, but on histopathology they just uh, reported duodenal stenosis and uh, they labeled it as crohn's though there was no granulomas or inflammation but uh, that's how it stood at that time but later on as time has passed we have in the last 20 years group pancreatitis has become a recognized uh, entity but many a times group pancreatitis and pre operative work up all six patients uh, there must be a dilemma of malignancy actually uh, you tend to think that there's an unseenate uh, tumor and uh, maybe the markers and uh, uh, the occurrence of jaundice is 
Yes, ma'am. All these patients were thoroughly investigated. Some features might have, uh, you know, helped you in differentiating the two. Uh, that, and, that's uh, very true, cool, ma'am. All these patients were thoroughly yeah. investigated, and in few yeah. patients, we have done US yes. FN also. In, yeah. With high suspicion of malignancy. So only after we were sure, and in after enough waiting of three to six months, we have uh, counselled them patients for surgery. Okay, I think uh, we can thank Sadaf and Rajin, and thank you Piyush for continuing with this. And as I have said earlier, also the number of live participants is usually small, but when we look at the uh, YouTube views, they are fairly good. So I think uh, the purpose is being served because uh, probably not uh, everybody is free at this time. So we will continue with this uh, exercise. And again, my request to all the participants that please suggest the topics which you would like to be covered so that we can include those topics in the schedule. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you, sir.